is where I shot one of my very first videos. Kind of funny how things come full circle like that. Someone's in my study room. Awkward. All right, what's up everybody? Back in the study room. Today is January, July 23rd, and we are officially one day out from the BIGS exam yet, the NPTE, one day out. And so I figured today would be a good time to go over um, how I've studied so far. Can't really tell you if it's the best way until we get the results back on July 31st, but I figured I'd just show you what I've been doing. So with any standardized test that I've ever taken, you know, ACT, GRE, I've always felt that uh, taking a course or buying a course was extremely helpful for me. Um, you know, just getting one of these huge books and then just kind of self-studying, uh, yeah, that, uh, that doesn't really work for me. I kind of need some more direction. I think it's more efficient. I don't want to waste time just aimlessly going through things when I can kind of streamline the process. And so. Uh, there's a lot of companies out there, but a friend, uh, classmate Kelly, recommended this one. NPTE Final Frontier, which I guess I should say is in no way endorsing or sponsoring this video. Um, I personally chose the online study bundle. They have a few different options. You can do the full live course. Uh, it's $540. dollars these study bundles, what I did, for $250. Aside from the cost of the live course, I just didn't think that I would be able to consistently make the lectures. They would be on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays at, uh, Saturdays would be like at 11, and then, uh, I don't remember the time for Tuesdays and Thursdays, but they're in California too, so that, uh, kind of messes with things, but, you know, everyone gets busy on the weekends. We were in clinicals at the time, so I just felt I just felt that it'd be a little bit easier for me to keep up with uh, the lectures on my own time. So this is what you get with the study bundle. You know, spent, I spent most of my time here with the lectures and recordings. Uh, you know, week one, all the way through. I think we got to week 28, 29, 30. Uh, 30 lectures over the course of the study period. Uh, they give you daily readings, which if we're being honest, I d did exactly one of the, I think there's 60 or 70. Let's see if that comes back to bite me later. Um, they give you a schedule here all the, when you're supposed to take practice exams, the readings you're supposed to do that day. And let's see here. We get, uh, we have assignments that you can do it more so if you're in the live class, I think. And then they give you a practice exam. Uh, the practice exam is a full 250 questions, so it should take about five hours. Uh, they also have oops. just additional study tools that I've found helpful so far. Uh, this one's kind of a summary of the most frequently asked questions, uh, important scales on this one, the other conditions for like hyper and hypo, whether it's with electrolytes or you know hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism. Some TMJ, which I went over, all that good stuff. Uh, I think the lectures were very helpful. They gave you study tricks, study like uh, mnemonics for certain things, and it's just I can't imagine doing all that on my own. And yeah, well, we'll see how it worked. During all the lectures, I also took notes on things I didn't know or things I wanted to remember so I could look back on them. Uh, I guess it's worth noting that each lecture is about two hours, some are a little bit longer. 
So you definitely don't want to put them off like I did and get, you know, 20 lectures behind and then have to crank out two or three of them a day to catch up. So that's a big piece of advice. Uh, probably common sense for most of you, but some of us, like me, need to learn the hard way. So the study bundle is great in building your the basis of your knowledge, but then just like anything, it takes practice, so practice exams, very important. Um, U of M Flint provided us with two score builders exams, one in the fall, one in the winter. You needed to get certain scores on those if you wanted to be able to take the um, NPTE early in July versus waiting until October when everyone's clinicals are done. Um, so those were nice in that they were in a simulated exam environment and then you got to review the questions and the rationales for a certain amount of time after you took the test. I would recommend taking notes on the rationales so that way you can look back on those later and like I said at least for us it was time sensitive so uh, you know some things either you didn't learn in school or you just forgot it. It's just nice to have a quick, concise you know, definition or a good reminder on what concepts you need to go look up later. So I did that for both those score builders exams. And then, unfortunately, I didn't get the score I needed on the second score builders exam. And so the school offered the PEAT exams, P-E-A-T. And if you got a certain score on those, you could still take the exam early. So that's what I did. I uh, was able to get the passing score, and so I'm allowed to take the test tomorrow. And same thing, they offer rationales with the questions um, that I always looked over. Another thing worth noting about the PEAT exam is that you get two when you pay for it. Uh, since we did it through the school, it cost $79 to get two exams. You get a retired PEAT and a practice PEAT, where the retired is an old exam from a couple years ago, and the practice PEAT is just a bunch of, it's a random assortment of questions made by FSB PT, and they may or may not have actually been on the real exam. And I found that those questions are definitely written differently than, you know, say, therapy ed or score builders, and so, uh, I, I would say that those two are probably the most indicative of how you will do on the real exam, uh, according to what I've read, rather than uh, therapy ed, which I've heard uh, is a little bit tougher compared to score builders being a little bit easier. Um, a nice thing about Final Frontier is that they kind of gave little baseline levels of where you should be on all the major companies like that. Like, oh, if you get 144 on this peat, you're on a track. If you got 136 on your therapy ed, you're on track. Um, nice little markers, makes you feel good, um, gives you an idea of how much more work you need to do still before the big test. Let's talk about your phone. So there, there's a few apps I recommend using. Um, PT365 is a great one. It offers a daily question every day. Uh, let's see. We're not going to look at the overall score of mine because it's embarrassing. I had a real rough uh, first couple months on this app. But let's see. So they give you a month by month breakdown. Let's just pick. Give you a percentage of how other people answer the question. what the answer is, the rationales for each of the answer choices. Great. And they give you other statistics by system, difficulty. Really nicely done app there. 
Uh, this one is through Final Frontier. They recently updated it, and you have to make a new. I'd have to make a new account, and I didn't bother because it was two days before the exam. But they also offered daily questions. Uh, this one's NPTE Pocket Prep. Same thing, you get a question of the day. I paid for the premium version of this, which is $30. I think you get a limited number for free, but then after that point you have to start paying to get the new questions. It offers up to like 600 total. Um, really good one on the go because you can do what they call a quick 10 exam. You know, you don't have time to sit for a whole four or five hours, so give you a quick 10 questions, they time it. Uh, I'm just going to pick one, I didn't really read it, but it gives you instant feedback, rationales, sources, good stuff. This one, honestly, I downloaded it, didn't use it too much, but they have flashcards, what didn't seem as user friendly to me, but if you really need more, you know, I guess you can mess around with that. The last thing I wanted to talk about on the phone is podcasts, and I think this here is the best one, NPTE Clinical Files with Kyle Rice. It's free. They have a Facebook page. It's also free. Uh, we're up to season two, 52 episodes. And in each one, he goes over a question lays out the answer choices, and then goes over why each one is right or wrong and helps you narrow it down to the correct answer. And halfway through season two, it was nice, he started doing these PDF cheat sheets, which I then started to print off and add to my NPTE binder along with my practice exam notes, my lecture notes from Final Frontier, uh, really nice graphics, it provides mnemonics, just, you know, a lot of quick things that he's seen and noticed on the exams that he thinks you should know. And, uh, yeah. So I was a really big fan of all the phone apps and like, the podcast especially, just because you never had to dedicate hours at a time to go through it. You know, I didn't have to sit myself down in front of my computer for a two hour lecture. I could just spend 30 seconds on PT365, 30 seconds on NPTE Pocket Prep, or you know, 10 to 15 minutes while I'm driving to school or while I'm driving around for work, I'm listening to the podcast. Just a really good way to still be studying, still being engaged in your study process, but not having to feel like you're locked in studying all the time. PT365 was another thing I tried to keep up with and take notes on, especially because the questions, they only keep them up to 90 days. So like right now, I could go back to probably April if I wanted to and look at questions and the rationales there. But if I wanted to go back to October, which is when I first got the app, I couldn't do that. But. Uh, yeah, honestly, I haven't really reviewed anything that I took notes on just because it gets annoying to have to update that every single week or every single day if you wanted to really stay on top of it. Especially when I had, you know, all these from practice exams, the cheat sheets to go over, and then probably most importantly, the notes from Vinyl Frontier. So I figured I'd talk about the overall cost of what I've spent on everything. I kind of mentioned prices earlier, but just to put it all together, so, like I mentioned, the study bundle was $250. I got the Therapy Ed book. That was $90. I chose this because after doing some reading, I was under the impression that the three exams you got here were tougher than the ones you get in Score Builders, and so I figured it was the most productive to get the more challenging exams. But they were worded weird, and I didn't like the format as much as Score Builders. Um, I don't know, uh, you know, it, it's a practice exam, what do you, nothing special there. Uh, but for the book itself, I didn't really use it. I used it more as a reference, so if something in Final Frontier came up, or something on one of the practice exams came up, 
He's like, oh, I wanted to learn more about it. Just looked it up here. Uh, so yeah, that, that's, that I paid for the premium features on that one app, which is around $30. And the PEAT exam, which, I mean, you don't have to pay for that, but in my case, I needed to in order to take the exam early. And again, you'd get two exams at that. So, um, 90, 250, 30, 79, it's about $450 total, which I didn't really add up before, and that's kind of a lot. But it's a $600 test, and I'm not really trying to take that more than once. So I kind of feel like it's worth it. Drop in the bucket. Hopefully it pays off. It's now 5 o'clock. The Final Frontier instructor said you're supposed to be done studying by 8 o'clock. But I don't think that's going to happen. I'm driving over right now to Ashley's house. Well, Ashley's parents' house because I scheduled my exam in Ann Arbor, which is about an hour from my house. But uh, they actually, the closest testing center to me would have been Livonia. But right now, I 75 South has a lot of construction and traffic, and I really didn't want At to deal roundabout. with that. Take the first exit onto Martin Parkway. Didn't really want to deal with that uh, the morning of my exam, or have to wake up earlier than normal. So. I'm gonna be staying the night there. Dinner, breakfast tomorrow. That's disgusting. How is that even helpful? It's not, okay, so the thing is, it was, it, when I was going through, if I forgot things from, like this one's like, look up joint receptor notes. Or like, forearm pneumonic. Like forearm muscle pneumonic. So it was more, I was too lazy to look it up then, so I made notes to look it up later, and I never looked it up later. <laughs> That's what, that was going to be my next question. Yeah, I didn't. All right, Ashley, study advice for the NPTE. I need to prepare for October. <laughs> that could have been better. <laughs> what do you regret about your study process for the NPTE? The July one. <laughs> that I don't know how to study. Yeah, maybe less sticky notes. Yeah, maybe I should have actually looked up what I wrote on these sticky notes. Such as differences between hepatitis A, B, and C, which I still don't know. That would be like one question at best. Yeah, but still. Did you also know there's a difference between gastric and peptic ulcers? Yeah, peptic ulcers is the coffee ground amesis one. Huh? <laughs> so I was telling people about the study bundle and how if I had to just do it by myself, like go with this book, I wouldn't know what to do or where to start. How have you gone about just uh, tackling this big guy here? Started from the front. Did, did you seriously just go cover to cover? <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I think I asked a few people, and I think Casey had a better idea, but... Well, she had the yeah. study bundle too. Oh yeah, that's true. So yeah, I don't know. I started from the front. How far did you get? I mean, you obviously didn't get all the way through it, did you? Yeah. Because I think I definitely didn't do, oh, I actually did all that. I didn't do equipment, devices, and technology. Okay. And I didn't do safety. And then what's the rest of this? Is that like an index? I think it's the rest of the um, practice exam stuff. Oh, I mean, hey, that's pretty good. You still got through like most of it. I probably the more important stuff. Yeah, I think yeah, Anna said she just made like a schedule, okay. so she kind of planned out. I think she only made it through like the first week of her schedule. Okay, well she's smart. She doesn't need to follow a schedule. Yeah. I think I made like a day or like three days of a schedule, and I never did it. I think that's still pretty good. Good job. There. So normally, with any test ever, I will stay up till like midnight, one, two o'clock to study, but. I feel like this one, I'm gonna give it a really good, really good attempt. I'm gonna try really hard to be, let's see, it's 10.50, we'll call it 11.30. That'll be like the earliest I've ever stopped studying for a test. And I guess that 
this is a good enough occasion for it. So we'll see how we do. I wanted to get through a couple more things here. And then, honestly, I, the whole point of me coming here, I thought I was going to miss this traffic. And then I was talking to Ashley and her mom, and she said that I'm probably going to hit traffic anyway. So that was sweet. So I'm still going to have to get up a little bit earlier than I planned. But see you guys tomorrow morning. Good morning, YouTube. Today is test day. And that's the spot. Good old Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's kind of funny. Well, I mentioned the whole full circle thing yesterday, but I was thinking about it on my way over and kind of scary that today is like the culmination of seven years. It started here seven years ago, undergrad in uh, U of M in Ann Arbor, and seven years later, here we are, Ann Arbor. I'm gonna take the biggest test of my life, probably. Which, honestly, I hadn't really thought about all that before I started talking to the camera. Maybe suck myself out a little bit, but that's okay. Just a couple last things. Uh, I asked Ashley this question yesterday, but I never answered it myself, about things I might do differently when studying. And uh, one thing I would definitely do differently is I think I spent too much time gathering information, so putting everything in that binder with, you know, printing out my notes from uh, practice exams, filling it up with those cheat sheets. Uh, so I spent more time doing that rather than actually going over it, reading it, learning the material. So it was like probably two, three weeks ago, I was like, oh, oh yeah, great, I have this binder, but oh, ooh, I haven't really like read over it that much. That's not, that's probably not good. So then I felt like I was kind of rushed, kind of had to scramble because it takes a long time to go through it and I definitely underestimated that. So maybe, yeah, time that out a little bit better. But other than that, you know, having the study bundle helped keep everything fresh, kind of kept me on schedule once I got past the initial, you know, 20 lecture delay. Also, in case you were wondering, barely hit any traffic, only a couple of slowdowns here and there, and it's 7.56 for my nine o'clock exam you're, i mean you're supposed to be here 30 minutes early but i feel like those are always recommendations versus like you need to be here 30 minutes early but either way 756 that's great for me for someone who's always late especially like to school stuff granted this is the one thing you can't really afford to do like to afford to be late for but i don't really know what i'm going to do with myself right now because i don't know if i can check in maybe i'll get coffee or something but i am not used to this at all but i did it so, <laughs> you know, starting the day off right it can only be good things from here, hopefully. So with that, I think I'm going to wrap up the video. Uh, I think I'm going to do a live, like a video of like live reaction of me opening my results for the first time, which is, you know, hopefully they're good because if it's bad, that's going to be, that's going to be kind of awkward to watch, uh, especially for me having to go watch it multiple times while I edit the video. So. You know, for that reason alone, I hope I pass. But, uh, yeah. Wish me luck. And hopefully, I'll, I mean, I'll see you in about a week. In about a week, the results come out July 31st. So, I will see you then. Just one more quick thing. So, you have to take off all the jewelry, unless it's like a wedding band or religious or something, before you go into the test center. Ooh, look at that guy. That's... That looks good. Watch one, not so bad. That's normally worse. But yeah, I never, I never take this one off, so that was a real sight to see.